Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Road Tripping with Royal Farms. I'm Evan, and today we're exploring the fascinating history behind the World War II watchtowers that dot the Delaware coastline. Before we dive into this topic, it's important to understand the context of the time. World War II began in Europe in 1939, but the United States didn't enter the conflict until December 7, 1941, following the Japanese attacks on Pearl Harbor. This event dramatically changed the landscape of American coastal defense, including right here in Delaware. Let's start by talking about why these towers were built in the first place. In the early days of America's involvement in World War II, there was a very real fear of enemy attacks on our shores. German U-boats, or submarines, were patrolling the Atlantic Ocean, posing a significant threat to American ships and the coastal areas. In fact, in the first half of 1942, German U-boats sank nearly 400 ships off the east coast of the United States. Delaware, with its strategic location on the mid-Atlantic coast and its proximity to important waterways like the Delaware Bay and River, was considered a potential target. The Delaware Bay in particular was crucial because it led to the ports of Wilmington and Philadelphia, which were vital for the war efforts. To address this threat, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers devised a plan to construct a series of fire control towers along the coast. These towers were part of a larger coastal defense system that included artillery batteries and other military installations. The primary purpose of these towers was to spot enemy ships and submarines and to help direct artillery fire if needed. Now, let's talk about the construction of these towers. Between 1941 and 1943, 11 concrete towers were built along the Delaware coast. These towers were constructed using a technique called slip form construction, which was relatively new at the time. This method involved pouring concrete continuously into a form that was slowly raised as the concrete set. This allowed for rapid construction, with each tower taking only about four days to complete once the foundation was in place. The towers along the Delaware coast varied in height, ranging from about 40 feet to 75 feet tall. The tallest tower was known as Tower 7, stands at 75 feet, and is located at Cape Henlopen State Park. The different heights were designed to provide overlapping fields of view, ensuring comprehensive coverage of the coastline. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell so that you can find out about new videos. Each tower was equipped with an array of sophisticated equipment for its time. This included long-range binoculars, azimuth scopes for determining the exact position of ships, and communication devices to relay information to other towers and artillery batteries. The towers were staffed 24 hours a day by a team of soldiers who worked in shifts, continuously scanning their horizon for any sign of enemy activity. But the towers and their crews didn't work in isolation. They are part of an intricate network that included gun batteries located at Fort Miles on Cape Henlopen. Fort Miles, which was named after Lieutenant General Nelson Appleton Miles, was the headquarter for the entire harbor defense of Delaware. It was a massive installation that housed over 2,000 soldiers and included numerous gun batteries, bunkers, and other defensive structures. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see me do a video on the history of Fort Miles. Now the way this coastal defense system worked was quite ingenious. When an enemy ship was spotted, observers in at least two towers would use their equipment to determine its exact location. This information would then be relayed to a central plotting room at Fort Miles. There, soldiers would use the data to calculate the ship's position, speed, and direction. This information would then be sent to the gun batteries, allowing them to accurately aim their weapons if firing became necessary. Interestingly, despite all this preparation, the towers and associated artillery were never used to fire upon enemy targets. However, their presence served as a powerful deterrent and played a crucial role in the coastal defense strategy. The towers weren't just used for spotting enemy ships. They also played a vital role in rescuing allied ships that had been attacked by U-boats. In several instances, tower observers spotted lifeboats or debris from torpedoed ships and were able to coordinate rescue efforts, saving many lives. As World War II continued and the threat of coastal attacks diminished, the importance of the watchtowers began to wane. By 1944, many of the soldiers staffing the towers were reassigned to other duties. After the war ended in 1945, the towers were abandoned. For several decades after World War II, the towers stood as silent reminders of a time when the threat of invasion was on every American's mind. Many fell into disrepair. They were the victims of coastal weather and neglect. 
However, in recent years, there has been a growing movement to preserve these important historical structures. The best preserved tower is Tower 7, located at Cape Henlopen State Park. Tower 7 has been restored and is now open to the public. Visitors can climb to the top and experience the same exact views the soldiers had over 75 years ago. The restoration project involved repairing the concrete structure, installing new stairs, and adding interpretive exhibits that explain the tower's history and function. Other towers have also received attention. For example, Tower 3 near Dewey Beach was restored as part of a community effort and is now open to the public. These restoration projects not only preserve important historical structures, but also serve as educational tools, helping new generations understand the realities of World War II and its impact on the home front. The watchtowers scattered along the Delaware coast are more than just concrete structures. They're real links to our past. They remind us of a time when ordinary Americans came together in extraordinary ways to defend our country. The soldiers who manned these towers, often in harsh weather conditions and under constant stress of potential attack, played a crucial role in protecting our shores. Furthermore, these towers serve as reminders of the global nature of World War II. While the major battles were fought overseas, the war had a very real presence here at home. The watchtowers, along with other defensive measures like blackout regulations and rationing, brought the reality of the war to American soil. As we look to the future, it's important that we continue to preserve these vital historical sites. They offer valuable lessons about our history, the ingenuity of American engineering, and the sacrifices made by previous generations. By maintaining these towers and sharing their stories, we ensure that future generations will understand and appreciate this significant chapter in our nation's history. Thank you for joining me on this journey through these fascinating pieces of World War II history. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell. I'm Evan, and I hope this video has given you a new appreciation for these remarkable structures that dot the Delaware coastline.